Oh. Okay, everybody, I'm back. This is part two, Chuck Holler. In part two, I want to discuss why so many people think that Obama is the Antichrist and why he could fit that role so easily. Um, where to start? <laughs> um, of course, the Antichrist is considered the beast. It's uh, When you go back to the first election on his first term, uh, and a, a couple of these things, they, they're just uh, small snippets, but the Illinois Lottery has a pick three number, and never before has the number been 666 three times in a single year. And the year that he ran for president, three different times when he had a political victory, first of all when he was uh, considered uh, the major candidate for the Democratic Party, second when Hillary uh, declined and dropped out of the race, and then third election night he won the race. The night after each of those events, the pick three was 666. Coincidence? I don't know. Uh, they say there's no such thing in the Hebrew language as the word coincidence. The Hebrew people believe that if there's a coincidence, that it's really the Lord trying to give a message to you, and that you should kick back, take a look, try to figure out what he's trying to say. So, I don't know. I know that when he was elected on inauguration, he's got the limousine, the beast. We've all heard of the beast. They have documentaries on it. But I was watching CNN. I thought it was uh, kind of weird that as Obama's walking down uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and the car's strolling along the side of him, that the commentators, as they talked about the car, of course, they just kept talking about the beast. Here comes the beast. Look, the beast is driving slower than I thought it would. Beast has got a nice collar. You know, they say the beast is an impenetrable tank. Uh, the beast can withstand chemical attacks. And they just went on and on. If they said beast once, they said beast 20 times. So, anyway, neither here nor there. Um, little Uncanny, his name was Obama. Um, you know, before that it was, uh, we had different presidents. We had Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton and you know, this is the nation that they rule. This was a Clinton nation. This was a Reagan nation. And, of course, all of a sudden, now we're an abomination. That's a pun on words, but kind of cute. I want to point your attention once we're talking about signs in the stars. And uh, fivedoves.com, if you go to their front page, there's a list of uh, articles. And I'm going to go to one particular one by a, a gentleman named Kevin Heckel. And it's called Astronomical Discovery and Revelation. And I'm going to just hit a few of the highlights here. But uh, it says, It recently occurred to me the dragon appearing in heaven was actually referring to the constellation Draco. In fact, the word dragon used in the Bible in the Greek language is drakon. That's uh, Greek, Greek 1404. The Bible goes on in verse 4 to say, The dragon's tail drew a third of the part of the stars of heaven. Now, looking at a star chart in the northern sky, from the perspective of Polaris, or the pole star, over the North Pole, the sky is divided into 24 portioning uh, sections. That's where we get our 24 time zones. And the tail of Draco wraps around from 11 hours and 30 seconds, RA, that's right, ascension, all the way to 1930. It takes up a third of these stars, eight of the sections. Uh, it literally... Uh, extends through one-third of the stars, uh, kind of like the scriptures say. I'm going to move on down here. You should go ahead and read this for yourself. The description in Revelation 13 of the Antichrist describes a beast rising out of the sea, having multiple heads, seven, between the equator, the bottom of the horizon, and the elliptic. It's the constellation Hydra. And as he goes on to describe this here, he describes the, uh, the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion, and uh, as this tail of Draco goes through each of each of these constellations, uh, spotted like a leopard, um, and you go through all of these. You get down to this particular sign described in Revelation, only appeared on in 1961, August 4th, 1961, at 19:24 p.m. exactly, which is the exact birth date day and year that Obama was born. Was it a sign? 
I don't know. It was in the stars. A uh, little unique. So, anyway, a um, few th other things about Obama. Um, his name comes out to 666, no matter whether you say Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, President Barack Obama, uh, his name before he was adopted, Barry Sorrell, uh, and it comes out in the Greek, the English, and the Hebrew, in all languages. So, in the past, we've had presidents that might have had, like Ronald Wilson Reagan, 666, that's, I think, it's about all he had, um, Clinton kind of looked like uh, Nero, a bust of Nero, but no president ever had the amount of signs like this. It's just very uncanny. Once again, we have a president who never went to Israel. All of a sudden, he's showing up on Holy Week. Uh, like I said in the, the video last Friday, um, showing up the exact same day that Jesus rode in on a donkey to present himself as the man of peace. And here, Barack Obama exactly 1260 days after October 9th 2009 when he got the Nobel Peace Prize here he is all of a sudden so there's a couple questions that uh, you might ask and that's well where's the temple and where are the witnesses well where are they you know Jesus said uh, to the Pharisees tear down this temple and I'll rebuild it in three days and they looked around and they said, well, it took 46 years. you saying you can do that? But he was talking about his own self, his own body. Scriptures looks at us and says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? We, when we become born again and the Spirit of God comes in us, we are the temple. When you look in Revelation and everybody's expecting the Antichrist to come into a temple... Maybe that's not how it's going down. You know, the temple is mentioned 16 times in Revelation. But there's two descriptions in the New Testament of temple. One is an actual sanctuary, a building. The other is a dwelling place. Now, the one that Jesus was talking about was the dwelling place. And in Revelation, every time it mentions temple, it's talking about a heavenly temple and a dwelling place. So let's not make the same mistake twice. You know, there might not be a literal temple. I don't see Jesus reigning from a temple that was defiled by the Antichrist. I believe that he's going to rebuild a third temple uh, miraculously, the only way Jesus can, according to Ezekiel. And that's how I, I believe. Now you say, where's the two witnesses? Well, you know, for the last couple years, there's been a lot of speculation about a guy named Dr. David O'Wer. Now, he was a, a neurosurgeon, I think uh, some kind of a brain surgeon in Chicago. And he got born again, and the Lord sent him to the mission field. He put down that very lucrative practice. And he's been ministering in Kenya and other nations, but mostly out of Kenya for several years. Now, I've YouTubed some of his stuff, and it's pretty uncanny. Uh, he's prophesied several times that they've come, uh, for instance, the earthquake in Washington, D.C., five hours before it happened, he had prophesied that. Uh, I've seen some of his meetings. I've seen leprosy just fall off of, uh, of a child. I've seen crooked bones um, straighten out, eyeballs appear in sockets. Uh, Rain called down on a bright, sunny day when there's not a cloud in the sky, blue sky. Uh, twice, there's two different ones of the Shekinah glory cloud falling. Um, he has never said he was Elijah, but he sure looks like Elijah. Now, during the Feast of Passover, the Jewish people who celebrate this feast, they leave an extra setting for Elijah. They're waiting for Elijah to come. There's a prophecy that... He will come before the Messiah comes. So when he came the first time, they kept saying, Where's Elijah? Where is he? Where is he? And Jesus answered and said, He was here. John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah. And that was well enough. Now, is the actual Moses and Elijah going to appear as the two witnesses? Or is it going to be a couple people who have the spirit of Elijah and the spirit of Moses? Dr. Owar sure looks like he has the spirit of Elijah. 
not just because he's bald headed but because of the miracles that he does the deeds that he does all of a sudden this week a monk appears at the Vatican in sackcloth named uh, Mosimo Copo Mosimo Moses I don't know um, he's from Assisi Assisi uh, where the namesake of the new Pope Francis of Assisi all of a sudden this guy shows up from Assisi you've got Obama and where's his counterpart namesake from Kenya I don't know it's kind of weird um, we'll see if these are the two witnesses if they are they should all come together next week in Jerusalem in the Holy Lands all at the same time There's the Pope Obama the two witnesses should all be there we'll see uh, I think that's all I have to say uh, interesting times folks keep looking up if you don't know Jesus as your Savior or you're not living the life that you should you know why am I putting this video out I consider myself a watchman um, you know you get a crown for just watching and it's a pretty easy thing to do uh, there's a lot harder things to do forgiveness that's pretty hard when you've been hurt by somebody especially somebody you love but to watch that's a pretty easy one and uh, there's a, some benefits right here and one of them is that he won't come on you like a thief in the night you know people say well no man knows the day or the hour you have no idea how often I hear that one but you know what they take that one scripture and they want to run with it when there's a half a dozen other ones that say watch you are not of the night you are of the day you will know when he's coming Revelation 3 3 if you don't watch I'll come like you like a thief in the night can you imagine a thief in the night in your house I don't know about other states but here burglary carries three to five home invasion means someone broke into your house and you were there that's an automatic 20 years because it's a very dangerous thing to do to break into your home when you're there a thief in the night it's, it's, it's pretty scary pretty scary and that's the uh, idiom that Jesus used it's gonna be if you don't see it coming is it gonna are you gonna know the day or the hour if you just knew the week you know um, John in, in first John it says you know we don't know what will be like but we know that when he appears we will be like him and we will purify ourselves to be like that so if you knew that he was coming next week or I mean you would take those little sins you have in your life because everybody has them and you start making those deals with the Lord like Lord help me get rid of these help, help me to live the way I'm supposed to I will try not to do it anymore and all you have to do is try because the blood cleanses from all sin if you if you sin he's you confess it with your mouth he's faithful to forgive you there's nobody who has done too much to be forgiven some i you know, some people say, well, I've done too much bad. Really? The Apostle Paul was killing Christians. You've been killing some Christians lately? Not only was he forgiven, he got to write two-thirds of the New Testament. So I would say that anybody can be forgiven. What do you, oh, I, you don't know what you do? You'd lose all your friends? You'd, no, you'd have the best friend ever, Jesus. And you don't know it now, but if you ever just took the step, he would be there so now more than ever it's time to make a choice you know it's going to be very obvious during the Ken Peters uh, video on I saw the tribulation he said one thing that was obvious is that during the tribulation it was very apparent who served him and who didn't the lines are drawn no more fence walking you're going to have to make a choice you're going to have to make a choice and if you make it before the catching away you will not have to suffer the wrath of God so, that's the end of part two. God bless you. Have a good day.